Hi all, welcome to the DCSCM base specification and design details session. I'm Priya Raghu, a hardware engineer at Microsoft Cloud Hardware Infrastructure Division. This is a joint session by me and Book Kao, who is the engineering director at Vibin. I will be going over some main elements of the DCSCM specification and Book will be going over some design considerations with respect to an SEM that they have been working on. So here's the agenda at a high level. We'll be going over the, um, some acronyms which we frequently use in the spec, um, some key requirements, supported form factors of the SCM, key interfaces of the SCM module, an example block diagram that puts together um, all the interfaces, and some next steps to follow up on. Here are the acronyms. DCSCM refers to the Data Center Security and Control Module. DCSCI is the Data Center Security and Control Interface. It's the standardized connector interface of the SCM module. HPM, which is basically the motherboard um, or the host processing module managed by the DCSCM. The HPM FPGA is basically the programmable logic device on the HPM typically used for power and reset control with the added function of serializing and deserializing the GPIOs between the HPM and the BMC. The SCM CPLD is a programmable logic device on the SCM which is responsible for serializing and deserializing the GPIOs between the HPM and the SCM. It also performs some management functions on the SCM. So going over some key requirements, the spec aims to be CPU as well as BMC vendor agnostic. It is scalable across multiple sockets as well as C GPU and AI based systems. The signals across the connector interface are standardized. The form factors supported are standardized. It supports security and management functions. It attempts to be future-proof using reserved signals as well as by allowing for future expansion of signals via the serial GPIO interface. There are three supported form factors. The horizontal form factor, which can either be front or rear, vertical form factor, and internal form factor. All the form factors use the industry standard 168-pin 4C plus connector. On the right, we see a picture of a horizontal form factor SCM. It is a 120 mm by 90 mm module. It is coplanar to the HPM. It is derived from the OCP NIC 3.0, but is wider and longer than an OCP NIC, making it mechanically incompatible with an OCP NIC form factor. It is also electrically in incompatible with the OCP NIC. So this shows a horizontal form factor SCM in a typical one use server. You can see some of the front accessible ports and LEDs on the SCM here. So the key interfaces via the DCSCI can be broadly classified into three subsystems, the power subsystem, server status and control subsystem, and IO subsystem. Moving to the power subsystem, so the 12 volt aux from the power supply is the source of power for the SCM. The spec defines three sequencing signals in order to ensure an orderly turn on of the system and to avoid unpredictable system behaviors. The signals are standby enable, standby ready, and standby reset signal. The spec also defines two present signals on the DCSEI, the present zero and present one. The SCM power can be enabled based on these present signals. So the figure below shows a typical power subsystem block diagram with an SCM. The 12 volt aux from the power supply is turned on to the SCM via this E-fuse, which is enabled by these present signals. The E-fuse is recommended in order to protect against over current conditions. The standby VRs are the first to turn on, after which the SCM enables 
the HPM standby VRs via this HPM standby enable signal. Once the HPM standby VRs are good, this HPM standby ready signal is input back to the SCM, which in turn releases the HPM standby reset signal to the HPM. The spec does specify a max power of 28 watts for the SCM after derating and finally the SCM is not intended to be hot swappable. Moving on to the server status and control subsystem. So there are buses wherein the HPM is the master including the eSpy and LPC bus used in some architectures or I2C bus used in some other architectures. There are also buses where the SCM or the BMC is the master like I2C, I3C used typically for DIMMs on HPM as well as QSPY typically between the BMC and the HPM FPGA. We also support the serial GPIO interface between the SCM CPLD and the HPM FPGA. Moving on to the serial GPIO interface, the signaling involves four signals, which are the clock, load or select line, and data in and data out signals. The target frequency of the clock is intended to be 25 megahertz or higher. We also support a high latency and a low latency interface. The latency being determined by the number of GPIOs which are serialized on these buses. High latency signals include CPU alerts, VR alerts, power status and I2C alerts, as well as some MUX selects and SCM status and control signals. Some of the low latency signals include power throttle signal or PSU alert type of signals, wherein a quick response may be desired in the system. Moving to the management and telemetry signals, we support a total of 11 I2C buses and 4 I3C buses on the DCSEI. These buses are fully dedicated to the HPM and not shared with the, H with the SCM. We recommend that the fan control be done through an I2C based fan controller on the HPM in order to avoid cabling to the SCM. We also support PECI as a management bus for architectures that use it. For debug, we support several interfaces like JTAG, USB, and UART. Other IOs via DCSCI include a PCIe BY1 interface, typically used for video or firmware update, the network controlled sideband interface. The spec provides a detailed timing uh, considerations for this, host boot interface like SPY or QSPY as well as miscellaneous GPIOs like root of trust, reset controls, debug IOs, interrupt, interrupts, as well as some power supply related signals. Finally, putting all of these interfaces we talked about together in a block diagram, looking at some of the key component, components, we see there's the BMC and the associated memory. We have the root of trust, as well as the BMC and the BIOS flashes, the SCM CPLD, the trusted platform module, and the front panel with the USB, mini display port, and RJ45 interfaces. Again, the spec goes into a lot more detail into all of these interfaces. Next steps. We would love for you to get involved by, by joining the DCSCM subgroup and signing up for the mailing list shown below. Please review the latest SCM specification up on the OCP website shown here and provide your valuable feedback. Thank you for joining the session today. I'll now hand it over to Book. Everyone, this is Booker from Wimbledon. I'm a double E. I work with Microsoft Gen 9 project. And SCN will implement in Microsoft Gen 9 project. This is SCN and the Microsoft Gen 9. SCN will place in middle area. It can plug in front side. About the SCN placement, 
you can see all the firmware paths are assembled. DNC pass, bridge pass, um, security, TPN. The spatial pass is Cerberus. Cerberus is Microsoft designed security path. You can get SPI pass. No Cerberus, SCN cannot pull up. And no SCN CPU board cannot pull up. SCN block diagram, we define a SCI interface to let everyone follow it. And you can, based on our pin define to design your SCN board and design your base board. And if you follow the SDI interface, uh, you don't need to design the PNC anymore. Pin define is limited, so we design, we use the SGPL pin to transfer the low speed PL from PNC to CPU baseball, such as thermal triple processor pin. But we will consider CN design, we consider size, cost, serviceability, open framework, and the design experience. How about the size and cost? If we design SCN, we can reduce around 10% PCB cost. This yes, because high speed PCB material is very expensive. And how to avoid SCN and uh, OCP NIC card use the same connector? How to avoid we plug SCN in OCP NIC slot and how to avoid we plug NIC card to SCN slot? We design a different small size. As this one. When SCN plug in OCP NIC car slot, uh, SCN car is more wider than, than OCP NIC car, so you cannot plug it. Uh, when OCP NIC car plug in SCN slot, SCN car is longer than OCP car, so, so OCP NIC cannot touch to SCN car. This is our fail safe design. About open firmware, we can use a different BNC chip, such as SPID and uh, Noventa, and then we can design the uh, open BNC and the customization BNC. And we don't need to test the BNC board if we change the motherboard. If Microsoft agree, we can sell you the SCN board and uh, give you the customization BNC firmware, so you don't need to implement BNC anymore. Win-Win has the AMD project experience which design the SCN board. And we meet many issues such as SPI and other issues. So we have experience in SCN board. So I have confidence that SCN can meet this spec. So let's, this is why we consider the SCN interface and the connect and our experience. This is SCN. So any question, you can send the email to below link. Thanks. We win. Your best choice for workload optimization and TCO. Everybody, thank you for attending this session today. Please let me know if you have any questions.